The renowned gin which Charles Tanqueray gave his name to was produced by a still in London until it was severely damaged in World War II. The surviving still moved to Cameron Bridge in Scotland, where it continues to this day under master distiller Terry Fraser. When he started at the distillery here on the River Leven, Terry began on the bottling line. Three and a half decades on, he oversees everything from sourcing high-quality botanicals to the supply across the world. Terry, this is literally the heart of Tanqueray. I believe this is where you keep all the botanicals. Yes, we source them from all over Europe and wider than that as well. And this is where we store them, so we have our juniper. The start of any gin, I guess. Yeah, a gin's not gin without juniper. So that's <laughs> right. where it all starts. Our favourite region is Tuscany. Amazing. And is that coriander? That's coriander. Our favourite region tends to be the Balkan regions. When you actually kind of rub it in your hands, you get a real lemony, lemony character. And that's what we're looking for, is a very, very strong lemon character. Right. It just makes you want to cook or have a gin. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? That I've never seen before. Angelica. It's a very important botanical. And this is actually a root. Wow. Uh, it takes two years to mature uh, in the fields in, in Saxony and yeah. Germany. This and smells it. quite aromatic. It's mainly a slightly sweet bit chocolate kind of character. Right. Beautiful. Okay. And what else do we have next? Licorice. <laughs> we have licorice, uh, which is sourced from China. And that just provides a bit of sweetness to the gin. Um, and it's actually it's 100 times sweeter than sugar. It's quite something in this form. <laughs> to the juniper, coriander, angelica and licorice, they add grapefruit, fresh lime, orange and chamomile flowers. This is the, uh, the chamomile flowers uh, that we source from France and that's a really key ingredient in T10. As well as the citrus fruit that we put into the distillation, we also add the chamomile flowers. So if you just actually take the flower and just go to the bud and just tear the bud in half and you'll get the flavours of the chamomile oh through. This is the craziest thing I've ever experienced. Literally, it just says Tanqueray number 10. Yeah. Literally, I feel like I'm sipping on it, actually. Yeah. Yeah. That is the wildest thing I've ever experienced. This quality of gin corresponded with the invention of the continuous still and its advancement into what they call the coffee still. The result was a cleaner spirit, which needed no sugar to hide imperfections. Where does the distillation process actually start? We have 12,000 litre stills. We add the volume of uh, grain neutral spirit. So that's really a blank canvas spirit that we have. So we then add in the juniper, the coriander, the angelica, followed by the licorice, just to give it that bit of kind of sweetness. We also add in a volume of demineralized water to that. We then close the hatch on the still, apply the steam, there's a steam coil inside the still, we apply the steam to that, and that starts that distillation process. And the very first part of the distillation process, once the spirits are boiling, all the botanicals are boiling, we have vapours rising across up the still, and they'll then hit a condense, cold water condenser. Once the hot vapours hit the cold water the tubes, that changes it to the liquid, and that's what we see coming out of the stills at the moment. Can we nose the distillation? Yes, we can. Oh, fantastic. The other main advantage of such a clean spirit is how it allows botanicals like juniper to shine through. What's really important, Lorna, is during the distillation, I'll add a bit of water as well. When you add water to it, it brings out the aromas better. Right. You see the shape of the glass as well, that helps keep those aromas in it. So as soon as I add the water, the characters will really come through. And we do this process every hour of the distillation. Wow. And that's to ensure that the consistency yeah. is there all the way through. It's amazing, the water's just kind of brought out all those fragrances, the smells that I'm familiar with. Yeah. Yeah. Is that tankery now? That is tankery. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. The number four still has been in continuous use since the reign of King George III, while this still gives their classic product its name. Terry, I believe that tankery number 10 is distilled differently. It's very much a craft gin. It's very much a hands-on distillation. It's a tiny 500 litre still, and it's real amazing, the citrus character that we get from that. We are actually the first to produce a gin with the use of fresh fruit. Some gin distillers will produce with lemon peels and orange peels, but we use the fresh fruit that we have on site 
fresh that day for the distillations. So Terry, can we have a chance of actually putting the fruit inside the still? Definitely, we're actually, Yay. it's a prime time, we're actually here <laughs> producing tea time today, so we're very fortunate. This new style gin goes back to the start with big, bold, sweet flavours. Is this it? This is it, yeah. This yeah. is our fresh fruit, so it's come in this morning. It's full of the oranges, Mexican limes and South African grapefruits. That's what creates a citrus heart. This is so amazing. I've literally been part of making Tanqueray number 10. This one's for the team! Yay! Thanks. Thanks for making it amazing. <laughs> Next was to sip the finished product at the Register Club in a period building celebrating British commerce and exports, of which Tanqueray is among the most celebrated. Stuart, the Register Club has an old charm about it. How would you describe the atmosphere? The building originally was built in 1936 and we've really tried to hone in on that fantastic period, around about the Art Deco period, so we've tried to encapsulate that in our drinks offer and our foods offer. We've really worked hard to, to source amazing Scottish produce here as well. Terry, having been in this industry for so long, what do you still enjoy about being a distiller? For me, it's the connection with a brand that's, that's went about many years. It's the connection with a small amount of suppliers. We would love to be associated with the brand. And it's having a, a very small team, really. We think about it, there's six of us are producing all the tankery globally uh, in the one site. Then that's really why it's a fantastic gin. How do you enjoy your London Dry? Are you quite traditional in the way you have it? I'm really a traditionalist. I love uh, Tanker London Dry and tonic and uh, lots of ice, nice serving and with some lime in it as well. And T10, I'm all about the tonic, the grapefruit and that's it. By adding that piece of pink grapefruit into the, into the actual glass of T10 with your tonic, it just brings out and, and further complements those grapefruit notes that come through with T10. Served with steel straws to save our oceans, there could be no more well-rounded, modern and stylish way to sign off our journey to Edinburgh.